Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. As Ukraine continues its advances into the Russian territory, there is something particularly curious about the defenses of Russians in this region. We're going to cover that and we're going to cover other topics that I missed yesterday. And most importantly, we're going to look into what are the experts stating on the objectives of Ukraine, the state of the operation and what are the potential future outcomes. It is very crucial for us to always have perspective of how fast maneuver warfare can develop and how fast we can see certain settlements come under the control of Ukrainian armed forces. To give you an example, last week we talked that the control of the area that Ukraine has in Russia has almost doubled. And here, it's a, in this map, there is a great tool that I want to show which uh, does um show the control of ukraine previous time and we can uh, see it overlapped so for example this is how it was initially reported the 7th of uh, august then on the 8th of august this was the territory that ukraine controlled as you can see the expansion is extremely significant and it's not really stopping. The tempo is not as fast because the surprise factor is gone. This map is also very conservative, so it shows only the core groupings of Ukraine. It doesn't really show a lot of forward moving forces that I can guarantee you for sure, most notably because we, we don't know yet, but, but there are reports that Ukrainians are much much, 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 much deeper into Koronevo than it is shown on this map. So even on this map, the conservative map, we can see that Ukrainians are doing a great job and uh, we will continue covering. Most notable settlements that came under the control of Ukraine in the last, uh, I believe, 48 hours, at least the ones that got reported. We always need to make sure that we remember about the time lag of reporting things happening on the ground. Uh, Ukraine has responded in this area right over here. They captured some uh, of the Russian settlements uh, in this area here. Ukrainians have also moved further, further south and from south they moved towards the Giri direction and right now the village of Komishne is already at least reported contested but again the time lag Ukrainians are probably much more advanced than that. Uh, and there is already talks about potentially Ukrainians trying to challenge control of Belitsa and Giri, which is a big, uh, if you can see, there is a lot of roads here in this area, these highways. So it's uh, very crucial for Ukraine to control logistics supply uh, chains and it will allow Ukraine to secure their positions. So this is it for today. I will do a more thorough update on the situation in Kursk in the next video. In this one, I want to focus on the things that I missed in my last video. First things first is uh, going back to the Pakrovsk direction because why it all started is because Russians are pushing quite hard on Pakrovsk. This is the Russian main axis of attack and they are advancing quite, quite fast despite everything and they are already breathing down towards the Ukrainian main line of defense. If we zoom in, we can see all of these blue things. These are Ukrainian fortifications. So the absolute main line of fortifications that Ukraine have in this area is this settlement of Grodivka, and then there is this river, and then there are fortifications along the river. So this is meant to be a big, big fortifications barrier. So a lot of analysts are expecting that this is going to be, hopefully, the stopping point for Russians, where they can slow the Russians down, where they can, with their attack in uh, Kursk, uh, get additional troops away from the area. But this is also where the risks are. So we need to be looking very carefully at the set at the town of Grodivka and see if the Russians will be able to breach it. If for, for some reason that Ukraine doesn't have the troops there or Russians are continuing concentrating their forces despite everything and if they would just be able to go through Hrodivka, then Ukrainians will be in a very, very dire position on this direction for sure because this will threaten the logistics centers of Pakrovsk and Mirnograd and Pakrovsk is, is very crucial pretty much Oh, let me just kind of draw like for this whole area right over here and probably even south. So that's that's why it's it's very, very important that Ukraine stop Russians in Hrodivka. Uh, and again, 
we should see that. And the most crucial point for us is the river. Then the curious thing about the defenses of Kursk, something that I knew about, but I didn't put two and two together. And Militarni here, they put two and two together. And the curious thing about the defenses in Kursk area is that the general that is mounting the defense of Kursk is the same freaking general that mounted the defense of Kherson region when there was Ukrainian counteroffensive in 2022. So now this general in this war, the two times Ukrainian made fast moving maneuver breaches in the Russian lines was both times in the command area of the same general. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a curious fact for me, uh, for you here as well. Uh, it's interesting that it's happening. Uh, he has good connection in the Putin administration, so he's not going to get sacked despite whatever we think. But this is just another point that underscores the fact that in Russian military, in Russian apparatus, the loyalty is much more important than competence. The major important topic that I really want us all to understand, and I'm going to put this video to play in the background for us to talk about, is that Ukrainians are now the occupying force. I know this is not how we want to think about this. I know this is not how you see Ukrainians, but that is the fact. And Ukrainians are openly talking about this. But being an occupier doesn't mean that you want to be an occupier. And Ukrainians are showing with all their heart that they don't. They're doing what they must do to protect their homeland. And already now we see that there are humanitarian aid that is arriving to the towns of Suja. As you can see this reporter filming the town of Suja, there are still buildings that are standing there. There are still civilians and civilians are being fed by the Ukrainian armed forces. And for me, this shows everything that we need to know about the Ukrainian military, that despite where they are, despite the position that they ended up with, think about it this way. For every Ukrainian and the Ukrainian military, Russians are baby killers. They are striking the population centers of Ukraine. They're killing civilians. They are taking the occupation to the next level they are setting up torture chambers in every town the Russians occupy. And Ukrainians are showing that this is not who they are. And I could not be more proud than this to support these freedom fighters. This reporter that was here in the news, this reports, someone took a picture of her and it kind of went viral because just look how, how happy she is. And this happiness is, I think, that that's the crucial point of something that no analyst can measure in this offensive that Ukraine is making. It is the moral factor. A lot of military analysts, especially when they're talking about that Ukraine should have used the troops that they sent to Kursk to send these troops to other directions, such as, for example, to Pokrovsk to help prevent Russian advances. All these analysts are making calculations based only on the math of war. But some of the military guys, not really military experts, but more like a military people, they have been stating that, you know what, Georgie, the war is actually more of an art than, than uh, a precise science. There is a lot of precise science in that, but there is something that just needs to be done. There is the element of morale, there is an element of surprise. Uh, surprise. There is the element of uh, support from allies and your own um, communities. It is a lot more than just moving numbers on the map and drawing the arrows. A lot more goes into it. And that's why the guy who is the guy at the general staff may be critiqued for that he didn't move the pieces where they, they should have been moved. But that's why he's in charge of the most competent military in Europe. And it's being said all across. 
I'm just going to put this guy, the PhD of law, uh, Gunduz uh, Mamedov. He is a uh, ex-prosecutor of the general of Ukraine. And he said it the best. He said, we simply need to be guided by the international treaties and the obligations they impose on occupying states. We must now establish the relevant policies at the legislative level, the occupation of enemy territory automatically raises questions about the administration of justice, the applications of substantive and procedural law, the provision of protection from criminal prosecution, the registration of deaths and births, property issues, and more. We cannot act as Soviet soldiers did in Berlin, driven by revenge. Civilians are protected by the Geneva Conventions and likewise property is protected. I cannot stress more just how important this statement is. That the rule of law, the democracy, the values that Ukraine is fighting for, a lot of times is being questioned. But the ultimate test is here. When there are Russian civilians that were supporting baby killers, that were cheering the Russian troops in Suja, their videos all across the internet from the time when Russian forces invaded through Suja into Ukrainian territory, and these peaceful, ordinary Russian citizens were standing there waving Russian flags saying, yeah, go, go, kill our neighbor. Despite all of that, Ukrainians are showing that they are above that. They are doing the right thing. U.S. has been also in negotiations with Ukraine about what's happening. So far, the reports are very scarce, but it seems that there is no immediate fallout. Right now, there are working things where Austin is stating that the United States will remain committed to help Ukraine defend from the Russian aggression. So, so far, there is no major fallout with the Biden administration, and I'm very happy to hear that. Zelensky is stating that uh, Pokrovsk direction now after the Kursk operation that has been more than successful, at least uh, what Zelensky is stating, he's stating that now there is a, a lot of focus from the weapons and supplies should be delivered to the Pokrovsk direction. Hey, Future Georgie here. As I started editing, it seems that the segment where I talk about the analysis perspective on the situation turns out to be extremely big. And I think I'm going to release it as a separate video that's going to be coming tomorrow. So today, this is where I'm going to end up. Please continue supporting Ukraine. We have our ongoing campaign here. I love you. Slava Ukraini. And I see you tomorrow with the video that I already recorded.